more is, for experience. Is there anyone you won't defend? There's one class that I would not defend um, on its face, which would be terrorists. Ooh. I, I can't say that I've been... Look, I've only been doing criminal defense for about a year, so I have not personally been approached. Yeah, you're still selling um, dime bags, bro. Once you get to the big stuff. Yeah, I, I can't say that... that look... I can't say that terrorism would sit right. I'm from New York. I, I lived through 9-11. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've seen that and I just don't. It'd be very tough to stand by, by, you know, someone that committed an act of terrorism. But look, even for those, there's a case. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> there's a case. It's go, a documentary. Jason, go. <laughs> this go. is what I mean. There's two sides to every story. But there's. Um, I love them. I love them. <laughs> go. For the quarantine, for everyone that's quarantined, I think it's on HBO still. There's a documentary. It's called The Newberg Four or something along those lines. Okay. And the FBI got some sort of hunch that these guys in upstate New York, not too far from New York City, were involved in terrorism and they were planning a plot in New York City. And they set up a sting operation. They set up an undercover to go up there and kind of befriend these four guys um, you know, to learn about them a little bit. And these guys had guns and a few other things, but they weren't criminals. They didn't, I don't think they've ever committed a crime before. And there was not much by way of a plan to actually commit any sort of crime of terrorism. But the FBI was so, you know, engaged by this hunch that they had that they sent this guy up there and he did. And this is what the, the documentary is about is he really entrapped them. It's called entrapment yeah. into going through with this plan that they never really had plans to go through. Um, and I think they were convicted and then they got out on an appeal, but it showed that they had no reason or, or plan to commit this crime until the FBI agent got there, befriended them and said, look, I got these bombs in my basement. Right. I'm thinking about targeting this area. Are you guys in for this? Um, you know, we need to pursue, you know, this cause, whatever it may be. And he kind of brainwashed and trapped them. So he radicalized them. He radicalized them. And interesting. And that it just goes to show that, you know, the people at trial, the jury that heard that case, they probably didn't see that. And now the documentary sheds light on it, you know, or the attorney didn't do a good enough job of showing that that's what happened. It's a tough and thing that's the to kind of, defend. That's the kind of case that I would defend. It looks like yeah. terrorism, but it's really not. I mean, he radicalized them the whole way. Yeah. So that's a good example that tied in. I know that that documentary about the Newberg case was pretty spot on but look in general terrorism would be pretty tough to to stand next to and, and defend but there's a lot of good defense attorneys that do it i mean a lot of people just want to make sure that the person gets a fair trial they get a fair disposition a lot of it has to do with death penalty which is more of a um a philosophical approach i mean there's there's death penalty attorneys that just take on those cases just because it doesn't matter who it is it doesn't matter who it is, the Boston Marathon bomber, right. Oklahoma City bomber, it doesn't matter who they are. They could they always say their first line, those defense attorneys at trial, they say he did it. They say, I'm not denying one thing. He did it. He set off this bomb. He goes, All I want you to talk about with you is why he shouldn't be given the death penalty. Okay. 